Hey guys, and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I was going to get us back to Armadillo, but turns out there's a lady in distress. This gentleman's stolen her wagon. So that's unfortunate. I like the way the wagon also ran this uh, guy back over. That pleases me. Yeah, right, nothing to see here, guys. Nothing to see here. If I could work out how to get on this wagon. So, yeah, in the last episode, we managed to uh, save Miss McFarlane, which was our good deed. We also cleared out a hell of a lot of bad necks, which was also a pretty good deed. Now we're helping out a young woman stranded. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, we tried. Come on, points for trying. No. <laughs> okay, so we learned something here today. You cannot handbrake turn a wagon. Now, although technically her wagon is damaged. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Technically, her wagon is damaged. Uh, I mean, the goods. What's going on here? The goods are technically okay. I guess, depending on what they are. Oh, we can rent this for five bucks. Really? All right. You can now save here. Once before... Oh, once. So this is like a one-time save dealio. All right. I was going to say, that's pretty cheap, to be fair. Uh, not really happy with the fact that we can only use this once. I thought we were going to be able to just buy this place outright. Apparently not. But, you know, whatever. I suppose everybody's got to make some money somehow. Didn't realise there were random little areas that you could... Uh, why is my horse all the way over there? This horse truly is not amazing. Come on, Midnight. Let's get going. So, yeah. Um, that was a rather spectacular failure to save some uh, woman's goodies. But, I mean, you know, we tried. We certainly tried. It's not our fault it went horribly wrong. We did kill the guy that uh, was stealing it, though, so props for that. I mean, he's never going to rob another wagon again. And she's still alive. So what if all of her belongings are smashed up? I mean, I don't buy that for a second. I don't buy that at all because there was no belongings in the wagon. And her horse was still alive as well. I'm pretty sure she could have salvaged that. But no, got to be a drama queen. Got to moan, got to complain. Honestly. There's a wild horse. Curious. Ah, here we are. Now, I'm kind of curious, actually, possibly getting on the train. Hey, Poochie. If we get on the train, we can actually complete um, that quest. Not that it's much of a quest. Where is the train? Uh, oh, the train's all the way over there. Ugh. Um. Is that the only train? I guess it is. God damn it. You know what? Let's go do a mission. We ain't waiting. Although, I guess we could sleep for six hours. See if that actually makes uh, any difference. I'm not sure how quickly that train actually moves. Evening, guys. Evening. Evening. How are you doing? Everybody good? 
Excellent. Excuse me, love. Right. Now, let's go take a nap. Whoops. That's definitely not going to cause problems. Right. Now, where's the train? Train has barely moved. All right. It's the world's slowest train. Sorry, buddy. Not really that sorry. So is it just Nigel? Yeah, looks like the only quests we've got left now is Mr. West Dickens himself. Fine, let's go make our secondary introduction and see what this guy wants. You shall not give false testimony except for profit. Wow. I can get behind that. And I can tell you with no uncertainty that miracle cures are no laughing matter. I bid you <laughs> good day, sir. <laughs> oh, Mr. Marston, good to see you. How have you been keeping? I'm well, Mr. Uh, Mr. West Dickens. Nigel West Dickens of East Cheap, London, New Waverly, New York, and Armadillo, New Austin. At your service. At my service. At everyone's service, at the service of science, of knowledge, of life. Uh, <laughs> how are your wounds? Hmm? Oh, oh, uh, much, much better. But then they would be. Mm -hmm. Would be. I know a cure for all ailments, Mr. Marston. Ah, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure for just $2 an ounce, I could live forever. Oh, but for you, sir. I do a bulk discount rate of 195 an ounce. <laughs> as long as you buy 100 ounces or more, that's a lot of immortality. <laughs> uh, give it up, old man. That's Mr. West Dickens to you, boy. Give it up, old man. <laughs> uh, listen, Marston, I'm broke. But this stuff is good. It works. I need a healthy young man like you. <laughs> Come along, and let's ride over to my newest customer at Ridgewood, and I'll explain while we go. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I mean, as long as there's coin in it, and we're not killing anybody. There are people there in dire need of my tonic. Unless there are people that need to be killed, of course. In which case, that's different. I heard about you, Mr. West Dickens. And I about you, John Marston. Hoodwink in the week, gullible out of their hard-earned money. My dear boy, it's you who is gullible, if I may be so bold, for heeding such ill-informed scuttlebutt. You're as full of wind as a horse with the collar. <laughs> I have been blessed with the gift of language, and for that I will not apologize. But the West Dickens elixirs speak for themselves. My thousands of happy customers attest to that. Those men trying to kill you didn't look so happy. Skepticism is the bastard child of progress, John. If my tonic is such a sham, how do you explain the fine battle in which you find me? Last time you saw me, I was knocking at death's door. You should thank the doctor for that. I reckon you were acting it up worse than it was. Act I can, John. A more convincing old fellow there has never been. <laughs> and so shall you. A fair Iago or Cassio make. I don't like the sound of this. Showmanship, John. The flourish. The bow. We are operating in a competitive marketplace. Our product must stand out. And how does this involve me? We're going to use your God-given talents to our advantage. I'm really starting to regret I'll drop this. I'll you off at the outskirts of Ridgewood. That way, it won't look like we came together. Once I'm set up, saunter nonchalantly into the cloud that is sure to be forming. Eventually, I will call you up to try my tonic. After extolling the virtues, I will have you perform a few feats of wonder to amaze and impress the pain. Such as? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary for a man in your line of work, I assure you. Best you alight here, dear boy, so no one sees us arriving together. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll see you there. Be ready to enchant the crowd. There's something not right about this. 
We're going to be scamming a lot of people. But that's okay. It's harmless, right? I mean, hell. They wouldn't give it if they didn't have it, I suppose. Daylight robbery is a bit of a bad term. And I don't think the phrase scamming has been coined yet. But I'm, I'm sure it will after this. souls of uh, Chola Springs, uh, gather round, gather round. Do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, uh, neurologic or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article that cures headaches, neuralgia, uh, earache, toothaches, Backache, swelling, sprains, sore chest, swelling of the throats, contracted cords and muscles, anxieties and ravaged nerves, stiff joints, wrenches, dislocations, cuts and bruises, and it adds vitality and vigor to the healthy man. <laughs> but can you prove it, old man? Oh, I'm sure there's some customer here who could prove the qualities of its by... Take a drink right now. You, sir, come up here. Step right up. That's the spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, pay close attention. This poor, wretched volunteer, entirely unknown to me, <laughs> will demonstrate the effects of Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Be you a cowpoke or athlete, this miraculous elixir developed with the wisdom of the East keeps the muscles supple and relaxes the cords. It loosens the joints and gives a feeling of youth and vigor to the whole system. Not possible, I hear you say. Well, doubt no longer. Faith can move mountains, but I ask not for faith. I am a man of science, and today, science will be vindicated. All right. <laughs> Your eyesight is greatly improved. Is that not so, friend? If you say so. That's right, it is. You heard him. <laughs> what a good sport you are, sir. Now, gaze over yonder at that porch. If you squint, you may just be able to make out the skull that's hanging there. Go ahead, friend. Shoot that skull and demonstrate the miraculous eyesight you now possess. Well, I mean, whose property are we vandalizing here? Ugh. I mean, sure. Remarkable! The eyesight of an eagle, granted by imbibing Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Anybody can make that shot. This man is a fraud. If your eyes so damn sharp, why don't you try shooting my hat out of the air? My friends, our hmm. test case has been challenged to shoot a gentleman's hat out of the sky above our heads. You can fool these people, but you ain't fooling me. Alright. Right. Let's just see how sharp you is with a moving target. Get ready. He's about to throw it. Multiple targets with dead eye. Go on then. Come on, buddy. Let's get this going. Get your weapon at the ready. I thought we were here to see. Right, let's do this. Well, there ain't gonna be a lot of that hat left. Have you ever seen such an eye? Behold the power of the elixir. Watch out of the sky. <laughs> hey, hey. That hat is Swiss what? cheese. You think you can put a hole in a man's hat and just walk away, do you? But it don't work like that around here. Excuse me. A challenge of battle has been offered to our volunteers. Oh boy. This is going to get worse before it gets better. All right, let's do this. Right, let's see if we can take this guy down. Sorry, buddy, but you wanted me to shoot your hat, so... There it is, skeptics and dissenters. Irrefutable proof. Do not let this opportunity pass you by! Look, he's over there. Go get this him! This ends now! Watch out! He's got a gun! Who the hell do you think you are? You, you ain't leaving here alive! 
Hey! You! Once in Dead Eye, target your opponent's gun. Alright. that can only be afforded <laughs> by the West Dickens elixir. Come, I have plenty for all. No harm in trying one bottle, I suppose. Hey, he saw the he saw the light well, in the end I of the day. That went kind of well, don't you? Uh, <laughs> my normal job involves either chasing after cattle or murderers. Not the likes of you, mister. Don't be like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to say my goodbyes, head on back to the real world. Uh, 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 wait, sir. I, I've been thinking about your predicament, and uh, I think I may have an idea. I've been thinking I could be your cunning Odysseus. Beware of the Greeks burying gifts, sir. Mm -hmm. Williamson had better beware. We will make them into Trojans. I don't rightly get you. I want you to go and see my old friend, Seth. Uh. He can come across as a little curious, but I'm sure you two will get on. He's a most often found at Coots Chapel. He's very devout. Why see him? Because between him and me, we can get those gates to open for you, and you can walk right in, just like in Homer's great Trojan yarn! <laughs> well, uh, so we're level two or three on the old Deadeye. Horse breaking jobs are now available. Alright. Yeah, I mean. I don't really understand Mr. West Dickings. He's kind of obviously a, a snake oil salesman. And I think he's written really well as well. I certainly won't be drinking any more of his mercury tonic or whatever the hell's in that stuff. Probably cocaine. Who knows? And what was up with that other fella? I mean, he was kind of bringing all that misfortune his way. If you don't want to lose your hat, don't throw it in the air and offer up a challenge. Anyway, let's go see Seth. I'm sure Seth is uh, on the level. A perfectly normal fellow. Having said that, if he's in cahoots with uh, Nigel... West Dickens, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's probably a questionable chap. But that's okay. That is what we're out here for. Now, where is Seth? Okay, not that far away. Now, I believe Seth is the character that I thought we were going to find over in Gaptooth, near the Tumbleweed Mansion. And I actually thought Seth was a stranger, but I guess not. That's if it is the character that I'm thinking of. I suppose we're about to find out. Come on, Come on Midnight. There you go. Get up there. I'm very glad that they've uh, announced the Red Dead Redemption 3. I just... I just hope... It doesn't lean any further into the old simulation. I mean, it's, it's it's far in enough, if you ask me. Right, oh god, this is the guy I was thinking of. Stay there, mid. Let's go see what we can find. Excuse me, are you Seth? Who are you? I'm a friend of Mr. Wes Dickens. My name is Marston. John Marston. Goodbye, John Marston. It's been a great pleasure. I need your help, Seth. We need your help. Me and Mr. Wes Dickens. Let me be frank for one second, partner. I hate people. It was people who got me in this mess in the first place. What mess? <laughs> Look at me. Look, scrambling around. Look for maps, half insane. I ain't washed in six months. My hair falling out, my mind's going. What happened? <laughs> what happened? My partner, 
He stole half my map. I never would have done that to him. Never. Look at me. Who did this to you? My partner. My boy, my man. Moses Ford. I don't have the facility to tell you what I would have done for that man and what I would do to him now. Why? Because he stole half my goddamn map. And what map's that, then? The map, partner. The map that tells me where it is. Where what is, friend? I ain't telling you that. I ain't. <laughs> don't make me tell, partner. <laughs> He's mine. He's mine. All mine. <laughs> sure. And where's this Moses now? He's at Benedict Point. The law got him for exhuming. Some people, they feel differently. Not Moses. Him and me are the same. The self-same. Well, come on, Seth. Let's go see Moses, get you your map back. Then maybe you'll help me. Let's go. Come on. Man, partner. All right, let's go follow Seth. He seems to be after a map. And as you can see, he's definitely a few bones short of a skeleton, that's for sure. And I wonder what his partner is going to be like. Digging up graves and looting from the dead. Ha, hypocrites. The whole damn lot of you. Are you saying it's better to steal from the living? They're uh. corpses. They don't care none. These people have been laid to rest. You don't know nothing. I talk to them long after they've been forgotten by every other fella. I tell them it's all right to be scared and alone. I embrace them when they're stinking and rotten. I met some sick bastards in my time, <laughs> Seth. But you? You're special. Folk is cold and heartless all their lives. To me, they get warmer when they're actually cold and heartless. Surely that makes sense to even you. Not exactly, it don't. Are we really living anyway? Do you exist outside my mind? Maybe we're both having the same dream, and when we wake up, we'll die. I certainly seem to be in some kind of nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Seth is a very complicated character. Bless him. His mind's long gone. Um, <laughs> you looked in the cave, Seth? <laughs> it's very dark. What'd you say? I, I didn't say nothing. I just heard you say something. You're a crazy man. You should get that head looked at. Seth, I need someone who can get a wagon inside Fort Mercer. I was told you could help me, but I'm not sure you even know what day it is. I don't. I can't even tell you what year it is. I knew this was a waste of time. So, you want to go after Bill Williamson, do you? You know Bill? Oh, yes. I met Williamson and Deke, and all them boys. Sometimes they call me on when they get some special job needs doing. I got a reputation as a man who'll do things most other fellers won't. Now, that I can believe. Uh -huh. I reckon you can get in there, no bother. Assuming you help me find this map, that is. Well, it looks like we're going to be stuck with uh, Seth for a while. Fly, fly. And I'm not sure that's... Uh... A good thing, but he's an entertaining character. What's Certainly is uh, unique. Nothing much, just unimaginable <laughs> riches and such like. A spark of hope that lit a raging fire I can't put out. I thought as much. Another treasure hunter losing everything in the search for nothing. <laughs> oh, I lost it all, partner. My wife, my children, my business. Good riddance to them all. I don't eat, I don't sleep, I don't wash, and I don't care. I know. I can smell you from here. It used to be about the money, but now I don't know who I am no more. I see myself, but it's like I'm looking at somebody else. Only it's me, you know? Maybe it's time you moved on. No way I can stop now. It's taking me over. Hello? There's no difference between night and day. Oh, Seth. Whoa. All right, this is it. Let's stop here a moment and come up with a plan. As far as I know, Moses is being held in that shack. There's a couple of deputies keeping guard outside. 
Can you distract him so I can sneak in for a quick parlay with that son of a bitch? I'm sure I can think of something. Alright, so it looks like we're going to get in trouble with the law. This might not go too well. Um, that was weird. Uh... Leave them away from the shack and out of sight. Somewhere out past that hill. Um, yeah, definitely some emulation issues going on here. Uh, 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 yeah, I mean, that was fine. Everything that just happened there was absolutely fine. Alright. Oh, this is gonna suck. Ain't seen a female worth looking at in days. Ah, uh, men never change. Alright. Oh, yeah, well, what are you gonna do about it? Jesus. Okay, great. So now we're out 20 bucks. Oh, this horse sucks as well. This horse really sucks. It's got like absolutely no stamina and no speed. Come on, let's get moving. Your wanted level is shown in the top right. Yep, we know. We've got to get out of the red circle. Like so. And when it says we need to stay hidden, well, it just means to be out of the uh, circle. But it doesn't really bleed off any quicker the further away you get. Come on. Alright, we should be fine. Cool. Now, I really want to get rid of this horse. Because it's shit. You don't realise how good a horse is in this game until you jump on one that's shit. And then it's like, oh, yeah. I remember. Like, look at this horse. Gets exhausted, like, straight away. Right, you can go away. Where's my horse? Good job getting rid of them clowns. Well, now keep an eye out in case they come back. Moses? Oh, Moses? You got a visitor. Oh my god, Seth. They arrested me. It weren't my fault. I need him alive, though. Son of a... Son of a bitch. Come on, Moses. There's no time for this tomfoolery. This ain't none of your business. Well, no, but I kind of need Seth. Nothing personal, friend. God damn you! <laughs> Why are you doing this? Because... I'm being forced you to son of a bitch, by the man. Go. Well, I'd love to put him on my horse, but I don't know where my horse is. My horse Who is miles away. Are, Pretty sure we've just been over this. Stay there. I also think the animation of putting him on you the horse. Uh-huh. Yep, get loose. Got ya. Come on. Right. Just me and you. Uh, we don't really want the money though. Whoa, whoa. We have plenty of money. We've got bigger fresh fish to fry. Moses, you son of a bitch! Where's my damn map? Damn you, sir! Damn you, sir! You've always been a twisting little freak. I ain't telling you shit. Ah, then I'm gonna cut you ah, up ah. piece by piece. <laughs> Till you find your tongue. Friend, this man's uh, gone crazy uh, in the sun. Uh, I suggest you take my advice and start talking. Shut up, Marston. I want to cut into a bona fide man's uh, flesh. Uh, Ain't never cut into a live uh, one before. Uh, 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 odd, odd fellow's rest. It, it, it's an odd fellow's rest. Now, get away from me once and for all. Well, ain't that a damn shame? I was starting to enjoy myself. 
think you gone pissed yourself, Moses. <laughs> Those deputies went and put a bounty on your head. Best we clear it now. Don't need the law on our backs. I don't have no money, but I got me a pardon letter. Here, take it. You earned it for helping me with the Moses. Uh. Come on, we can pay it off in the telegraph office. Ah! Ah! Um. Best we deal with this now, Mister. What's he paying you? I'll give you double. Look, you know what? You best run. You can get out of here, friend. Right, I think he shamed himself enough. Oh, that's convenient. I think I'm just going to pay it. Not really worth. <laughs> yeah, it's not really worth handing over one of those for 20 bucks. We just pay it. Nah, I'm holding on to that letter. So, Mister, thanks for your help. Don't worry yourself with thanks, Seth. Just help me when I come asking. No problem, Mister. Master. Well, there he goes. For better or worse. Anyway, I think that's pretty much all we have. Ah, oh, there's a stranger there as well. You know what? Let's just go activate this stranger. And then we'll call it a, a video. Old editions. Yeah, we don't need an old edition. Ah, hello. My, my. Take a look at you. When you take a look at you, you look like you've seen trouble, mister. Enough for a hundred men. Trouble has a way of finding me, mister. Do I like the sound of that? Do I ever like the sound of that? Trouble with a capital T. That's just capital. Whatever you say. Cold, tough, but with a heart of gold. The cowboy sings his lonely song like, like a dog whose bone is made of wood. Uh, excuse me? Oh, nothing. I, I was just writing my next piece. I've been sent out here to provide a little frontier joie de vie for the ladies back east. What? I don't understand a word you're saying, mister. Yeah, my mom felt the same way. And now she wrote me out of her will, and there's no hope for any of us. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Saint, sir, at your disposal. But uh, please don't dispose of me just yet. <laughs> what are you doing out here, Jimmy? Capturing the spirit of the west for a monthly back east you know i'm uh, sending them my oh so witty and oh so pertinent missives and gaining myself a little prize in the bargain so it's action i'm after and action i'm gonna find too <laughs> wild men mm, cheap women <laughs> guns that sort of thing guns <laughs> well you have fun fun <laughs> I'm gonna have the time of my life, sport. I tell you, mister, the time of my little old life. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with that, brother. Yeah, you you go have yourself a wild time. And in the meantime, guys, I'm gonna save it. We're gonna call it a video there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, oh. oh, okay. Actually, we can make use of this guy. We can get back to civilization and save the game. But I will catch you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, until next time.